Hey there guys, here's a video on finding percentage of a number. Okay, so this is from um, 4J um, in your textbook. And the types of questions we're talking about look like the examples here that I have. So finding 25% of 60 or finding 30% of 50. So you're finding like a portion of a larger number. All right, so firstly, before I show you this method, there are lots of other shortcut ways to find answers with these types of questions. I'm gonna show you those in, in a separate video. And the one, the method that I'm showing you here today, even though these examples are relatively easy, they become, this becomes very helpful when you've got more fiddly percentages. So ones that are a little bit um, obscure like 23% or 72% um, or something like that. Now there is also another way to do this and I might show that in a separate video too. But this is um, number one option for any type of question. So really good to learn. Okay, so the percentage, um, the question I have is 25% of 60. Okay, and what I've got written here on the side is the four plus steps that you're going to do when you're working with these questions. Okay, so the first one is express the percentage as a fraction. And we know when we're, percent, we're expressing a percentage as a fraction, we're talking about putting a number over 100. Okay, so I'm gonna do that with my percentage and in this question, it's 25. Okay, so that's first step done. Second step, change the of to a multiplication sign. Now, of course, if you have a word question, like a complex question, there might not be the word of there. You've got to recognize what the question's asking you, but that's what you're going to do for this one. Number three, express the number as a fraction. Okay, so the whole number. So when we have a whole number as a fraction, it is the number over one. And the last step, which I've clumped together a few things to do because they should be familiar to you now, is basically you're following the rules of multiplying fractions. We've done this lots and lots. So the first thing you're going to do is to try and cancel. And most of the time you can, but I have put it as a question mark just on the off chance that there's no combination. Now in this question, there's actually two chances, two points at which we can cancel. So um, see if you can pick up the second time after I show you the first time. Actually, now that I look at this question, there's two possible things I could do to cancel. So we know that whenever we're cancelling, we're looking at a numerator and a denominator, but it doesn't necessarily have to be from the same fraction. So I could cancel 25 and 100, or I could cancel the 60 and 100. Now, I tend to always choose, in these situations, the two largest numbers first, and then... Um, I'll sort out any of the smaller numbers later because the idea behind cancelling is to make the number smaller to work with. So you want to try and choose the largest ones. So I'm going to choose 60 and 100. So for 60 and 100, the highest number I can think of that divides into both is the number 20. So that will leave me with 3. Okay, so 60 divided by 23. 100 divided by 20 is 5. Okay, at this point I'm going to rewrite my fraction because sometimes I have a nasty habit of, of rewriting the wrong numbers if I try to do too much working. So don't be afraid to do that. Now, see, look, I've done it already. Jeez, that should be a five. Goodness me, it is Sunday afternoon after all. Sorry, guys. Okay, 25 over five times by three over one. Okay, so hopefully now you're looking and seeing, oh, yep, there's another chance for us to cancel here here and here. So if I divide by 5, that will make my 25 a 5, and my 5 will become a 1. I'm going to very carefully rewrite my fraction. And now that's heaps easier to deal with than this large, these large numbers up here. So now I've got multiply, and of course when multiplying fractions, we're going to multiply across the top and across the bottom, numerators and denominators. So that's 15 over 1. Whenever we have, oh, and simplify is my last step. Really, really easy to simplify this because um, we're just expressing it as a whole number. Whenever it's over one, it's just the same as what's on top. So 15 is our answer. Okay, 
25% of, of 60 equals 15. Okay, wonderful. Let's do another example. I'll try not to make any mistakes in this one, hey? I'm just going to try and leave my, my list on the screen there. Okay, so 30% of 50. So my first step is to express the percentage as a fraction. So 30 over 100. Change the of to a times. Express the number as a fraction. Whenever it's a whole number like that, it's just over 1. Cancel if I can. And again, there's two possible ways to cancel. We could do the 30 and 100 and the 50 and 100. I'm going to go with this combo. So 50 goes into 50 and 100. So that simplifies that right down, which is awesome. 30 over 2 times 1 over 1. Okay, now I can cancel here too. So if I go um, with the number 2, that leaves 1 here. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 30, 15. And look how easy that is now. 15 over 1 times 1 over 1 equals, multiplying across top to the bottom, 15 over 1. So just by chance, it's also 15, that number. Okay? So following those steps is going to lead you to get the right answer every time, no matter what the percentage and no matter what the number. I'm going to pause this or stop this video now and record another one that I'll post together with a few other shortcuts to make that a little straight, a little more straightforward for you. I might also make a video, guys, on a couple of other methods that can help you in these situations.